So, the LEGO Star Wars The Mandalorian lineup. This has got to be one of my favourite sub themes from LEGO. We have some awesome sets in here like the Buildable Grogu, the Moff Gideon's Cruiser and so many more and in this video today I'm going to be ranking them from my least favourites to my favourites and showing you exactly why. So of course guys, if you like The Mandalorian just as much as me, then make sure to let me know by leaving a like on the video and dropping a comment down below letting me know what your favourite LEGO Star Wars The Mandalorian set is so far. Of course guys, if you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing, as it does help out an absolute ton and I really appreciate it, as well as sharing the video with someone else who might enjoy it. With that said guys, let's get ranking some sets. Okay, so coming in dead last place for me is the Razor Crest Micro Fighter. This set definitely did hold a lot of potential, however, really didn't deliver on so many levels. You can see the build here for me is just really unfinished, it's far too blocky. The new stud shooters, although they are an improvement in my opinion from the old ones, they are just far too big on this set. They look absolutely ridiculous there. And altogether, the build just really doesn't feel like it's an actual Micro Fighter. It feels just like a 4 plus set in my opinion, it's far too blocky, far too simple is the way it looks and I don't know if it's just me or the model itself or just my model or what it was but these pieces just did not seem to want to go together especially on the little like, engines here they just didn't want to go together, it was really weird, I didn't like the build experience at all and altogether just really isn't a great set for me of course the minifigure is absolutely brilliant, this Mando figure is one of the best figures out there right now in my opinion however it really doesn't make the set that much better when you have him in pretty much every other Mandalorian set right now so that is last place for me Okay, so coming up here next is the LEGO Star Wars 2021 Advent Calendar. And this was the first ever LEGO Star Wars calendar we've had based off a certain theme in Star Wars. And of course, that was the Mandalorian, so technically this is a Mandalorian set. Now, despite the figure selection in this calendar not being too bad, of course, we've got that awesome new Scout Trooper mold and the new Scout Trooper in general. We've got a Storm Trooper, which isn't too bad. We've got the Baby Yoda and the Mandalorian in his best car armor with that cool little scarf. We've got IG-11 and a Tusken Raider, so that's not a bad figure selection. However, this is an advent calendar. It's not a proper Lego set, and therefore, it is in second to last place for me. Okay, so next up here we have the Mandalorian Battle Pack. Some people don't consider this as an actual Mandalorian based set, however, I do because on a website I looked on called Brick Economy, it had it down as a Mandalorian set. So here we are with it in third last place. Now, this isn't a bad set by any means, however, for a battle pack, it's not exactly good for army building. I mean, these figures here are great figures, don't get me wrong, but you don't really want an army of these exact figures because this would really be like a unique Mandalorian style for that exact Mandalorian, so it doesn't make sense to get a whole bunch of these, but it's a good battle pack nonetheless. Of course, you get the nice speeder here. We get a little build here as well, which isn't too big of a deal, but it's quite nice, I guess. And we also have some nice figures as well. Of course, we had the uh, stud shooters, which wasn't great, but fortunately, they're gone now, so that's brilliant news. But yeah, this is in third last place for me. Okay, so next up here we have the Mandalorian and the Child Brickhead set. Now this is actually one of my favourite Brickhead sets that are out there. Now unfortunately, Brickheads don't really compare to some of the other Mandalorian sets on this list. However, it's still not a bad set nonetheless. Of course, it's a dual pack, so we get two Brickheads in here, and they are both very well built. Of course, you have Baby Yoda and his nice pram there, and also the Mandalorian does have his weapon on the back, which is a nice little detail as well. So yeah, brilliant set here. However, it just doesn't really compare so well against some of the other sets. Okay, so next up in line here, we have the Trouble on Tatooine. This is a set that a lot of people were very hyped for at the time of its release. However, since then, has really depreciated in value. That is because of the, I guess, unrarity of this Beskar Mando figure. This was a really, really, really exciting thing to get at the time of the set's release because it was the only set that this figure appeared in. However, since then, has popped up in essentially every single Mandalorian set. However, this set is still pretty good. Of course, you have his speeder here, which is a very nice design and a really good speeder. You also have this little bowcaster crossbow looking thing for the Tusken Raider and a nice little tent builder as well. Now what would have put this set higher up on the list would be the involvement of a Cobb Vanth speeder. I think that would have really pushed it up quite a lot because if you had that included as well that would have been like the perfect set to go along with this and also the whole Tusken Raider thing so that would have been really good to have in this set but unfortunately we just didn't get it. Right, so here we have the Mandalorian Forge. This set and the Trouble on Tatooine were pretty equals for me. The thing that really just pushed this set above the Trouble on Tatooine for me was the exclusive minifigures. Of course, we have the armor, which, despite not being a great figure, it is still exclusive, and again, isn't actually terrible. It's just you have a few little mistakes on there, which really could have been avoided. As well as that, we also have the awesome Paz Vizsla, I believe is what his name is. This is a brilliant figure, one of my favorite Mandalorians that LEGO has actually made. I love the backpack on the back. He has a really nice weapon, and the helmet is absolutely brilliant. Again, no face print, which is a bit of a shame, but that's absolutely fine. And of course, the amazing, oh, and the amazing Beskar Mando. 
Now the set itself doesn't actually look that good on display, which is a bit of a shame, but it still does have a bunch of features packed into it, like the little flame thing here. This thing moves, um, I'm not sure if it's meant to move, but it does move, so there you go. And you also have like, this little workshop area here, and it's just altogether a pretty neat little set, and that's why it is where it is on the list. Okay, so next up here we have the first set from the Mandalorian line, and that is the ATST Raider. This really introduced LEGO fans to the Mandalorian, and it was a pretty good starter set. Now, starting off with the minifigures here, it definitely wasn't a bad startup, of course. We've got the old Beskar Mando here. This wasn't a bad first Mando to get, however, by today's standards, isn't as good as what we're getting right now. I don't know why that's not focusing, but oh well. Of course, we've got the two, like, Raider guys here. They aren't too bad either. They're pretty nice to have, just as, like, a, another minifigure, I guess, and they are pretty essential to have in the ATSC Raider itself, and we have the now rather rare Cara Dune minifigure, who I imagine a lot of LEGO fans are looking to get. Alright, so now onto the ATSC Raider model itself. It's definitely not a bad model, a lot of LEGO fans were a bit confused by it at first when they first saw it, but that's because they hadn't seen the Mandalorian, but it all does make a bit more sense now. Now the model itself is pretty good, the head is a very nice design. Of course you have the nice turrets on each side, all the nice cannons, and overall it's not a bad model, you've got some nice detail in there, a nice little bit of playability with the top opening up and stuff like that, and all together is a pretty nice model that started off the Mandalorian Lego sub theme. Okay, so next here we have Boba Fett Starship, of course, I mean the Slave One. I can't believe LEGO did that, it's a bit of a weird decision, but there you go. So starting up with the minifigures, a lot of people weren't too happy about the selection. Of course, the Mando figure isn't anything special except the Spear has, but that's really just the same Mando figure we normally get. Now the Boba Fett minifigure, a lot of people weren't too happy about because of the difference in the colour between the helmet and the torso. Now I'm not such a big I don't really care about it, to be honest. I, I think it's fine. They did a good job of the minifigure. The arm printing is honestly absolutely stunning. It's a great figure. Of course, I'd like to have the same colour between the head, jetpack, and torso, but unfortunately, we just didn't get that. Now, the build itself... It's very, very good. It's a lot more of a downscaled version to what we normally got from the Slave ones, but it's still a pretty good job that they've done considering the scale and the constraints they had to work with. Now, in terms of the actual like playability of the build, it's pretty good. It has a little carrying handle at the back. I'm not going to show you that right now, but it is still a pretty well playable set, I guess, if that makes sense. And you have a few features in there, like the little carbon thing and all that sort of stuff, and you can fit Boba Fett right on the top there. So, you know, it's not too bad of a set, but then again, it does let down in some areas considering its size. You do have this little cart at the back, which which is, I guess, just a thing to get extra pieces and a stand for the thing, but overall, not such a bad set, and that is why it is where it is on the list. There goes Mando. Okay, so coming up next on the list, I believe this is actually fourth place. So, in fourth place here, we have the Imperial Armored Marauder. This is a set that surprised me and a lot of people as well. I remember when I was building it with Eleven Productions, we were both very, very shocked by the actual, I guess, well builtness of the set, if that makes any sense at all. The set is full of different features, of course you have a lot of different flaps that open at the front here like this and also the top and the back and everything, it just all opens up, it's absolutely brilliant, you have a lot of room in there considering the actual size of the set and it's just honestly an absolutely brilliant build. The figures as well were very nice, we've got that new updated Grief Karga, which is honestly an amazing figure, really nice to have that. We've also got the Imperial Mortar Trooper, I believe this is what it is, or Artillery Trooper or something like that, but a really, really nice figure here in that yellow little colour scheme. We've got this little cannon thing, not too sure what that's called, I think it's like a mortar or something, but we've also got these two regular storm troops as well, which are quite nice for army building if you've got multiple of this set. So overall, a really nice build, very shocked by it when I did first build it, but then again, I'm very happy with how it is. So now taking the number three spot on this list, we have the buildable Grogu, also known as the Child, also known as Baby Yoda. This is part of LEGO's buildable figure lineup, not the really bad one, but the actual quite good one. Now this set honestly really did shock me when I first built it. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be when I actually finished building it, however, I was pleasantly surprised by that. It does have a really nice little cuteness to it, of course, you can move his head around a bit, you can meddle with his ears so he looks sad, and he can look happy, and he can look just a bit normal. You can also move his mouth, which is quite cool, he has like a little red bit there to I guess signify his tongue but yeah it's just a really really nice build I was very pleasantly surprised by it you have the little ball thing or the thing that he has from the razor crest there and also of course the information plaque that you do get with all of these sort of style sets as well as the baby Yoda minifigure so yeah a really good set here coming in at number three now, I'm sure this isn't really going to surprise many of you guys, but taking the number two spot here, we have the Imperial Light Cruiser, or Moff Gideon's Cruiser. This set 
absolutely blew me away after I built it. I wasn't such a fan of it, really, once I saw the box art and saw the leaked images and stuff like that, but after I built it, it really did surprise me. That's happened a lot with these Mandalorian sets. They really do surprise you once you've built them. Now, first of all, looking at the minifigures here, this is an absolutely brilliant minifigure selection. My favourite out of all of the Mandalorian minifigure selections out there right now. Of course, we've got the Moff Gideon figure. Not too bad. It'd have been nice to see a moulded Darksaber, but unfortunately, we didn't get that. We've got the first ever Dark Trooper that we've got, and hopefully we see a few more of them in the future. Of course, we've got that brilliant Baby Yoda figure, the absolutely incredible Fennec Shan minifigure, my favourite Lego Star Wars minifigure that I do own. It's an absolutely brilliant minifigure, really blew me away once I had put it together, because I didn't realise I had arm printing and all that sort of stuff, but the helmet mould and everything just really makes it a brilliant figure to have. Of course, you've got that awesome Beskar Mando and Cara Dune as well, so yeah, a brilliant figure selection for this set. Now let's go on to the actual model. Now, as I said earlier, the set itself did kind of disappoint me when I first saw it, however, after building it, I was really pleasantly surprised. Now, I do still agree with the fact that it's a little bit stubby at the front. This bit here just isn't long enough in my opinion, but it doesn't look so bad in person. Now, the interior is a little bit lacking with not much space, and I was a little bit disappointed by that, and I still am, but it's all right. You can still fit a good amount of minifigures in there. You can fit them all in there somehow, if I like, lay them down and they take a nap or whatever, but yeah, they do fit in there somehow, so that, that's a positive, I guess. The bridge doesn't look as bad in person as it does, like, on the box art and stuff. The cannons are far too big, but you need really to have big cannons for the uh, play features of it, because you have, like, the spring shooters and stuff, so you kind of need the big cannons, but unfortunately, they just don't look too good. You have to manage TIE Fighter things, which can shoot out the front pretty miserably, but they still do do it, so I guess that's a plus. And also, the engines at the back really do look really good. I'll try and get a better view of them here for you, but yeah, these things look absolutely great at the back of it, and really do round off the set quite nicely for a pretty good Mandalorian build. Now, taking the number one spot is the Mandalorian's main ship, until it got blown up, the Razor Crest. This set is just brilliant on so many levels. It has a brilliant display look. It looks absolutely great when you put it on any shelf next to any set. It really does hold that really nice display value. Of course, the interior as well is absolutely massive. It's really, really quite impressive as well, to be fair. You can open up all the panels on the side and get full access to the interior, which is to hold quite a lot of space, and you can fit all the figures in there with very much ease. Of course, you have the little escape pod thing on the top, which is really quite a nice bonus you get. You don't really see that in Mandalorian, but it's still a nice bonus you have there. Also, the cockpit is pretty easy to access, and also you can fit two figures in there, along with Baby Yoda in one of their hands. You have the nice little thing in here as well for like the gun rack and whatnot, and on this side as well, you have the little sleeping thing. Why do the figures keep falling over? That's really annoying. Speaking of the figures, however, this was a pretty big letdown for a lot of people in this set. Unfortunately, the Mando wasn't in its Beskar form, and looking back on it right now, at this moment, we have all the Beskar Mandos out, it's not really such a big deal. If it wants to focus, that would be absolutely great. But yeah, at the time, this figure was pretty disappointing to have. However, looking back on it, it's not such a bad thing. Of course, we've got that brilliant Baby Yoda figure. I believe this is the first time we saw Baby Yoda as well, which is pretty cool. We have the old Grief Cargo, which is a nice figure. That amazing Scout Trooper and IG-88 or IG-11, I believe, one of the two. But yeah, a pretty decent figure selection. Again, it would be nice to see some better Mando in there, but still not too bad. And that's why it takes the number one spot with very few flaws in the actual set itself. It's a really, really nice build, really sturdy, really strong, and is a really, really nice looking and really well playable set to have. So that is my rundown of all of these Mandalorian sets. Let's hit the outro. Okay, so here's another final look at all of the sets in order from worst to the best. Of course, these are just my opinions, and I want you to let me know down in the comments section below what you would rank these sets in. Of course, which one is your favourite and which one is your least favourite? I'd really like to know why as well. But yeah, there's a little look at all of them there together. It's a brilliant lineup from LEGO. I'm really, really happy with how they've done it. And even some of the bad sets or the not as good sets are still pretty good in my opinion and really do compare well to some of the other sub themes that lego have so that's pretty much it for this video guys of course if you did enjoy it do make sure to let me know by leaving a like subscribing to the channel if you are new and sharing the video with someone else who might enjoy it. i really appreciate that of course guys let me know what you think of the mandalorian so far and i cannot wait to see more of these sets coming out in the future with that said guys as always have a brilliant rest of your day and i'll see you all in the next one Peace out.